a day before my visit to France started uh, on Thursday, uh, I first heard that uh, there has been pressure on universities uh, to stop my speaking at French campuses. It's not a personal matter, but uh, it's also in some ways the very first time in my life that I've ever been accused of anti-Semitism. And I've been delighted that in the last five days there has been a petition circulating around that has been signed by no, by no less than 500 people. And the vast majority of these people know me. And they are professors, academics from across the world. Um, they are the heads of uh, my, my own university's head, the principals of many other South African universities. Uh, five South African government ministers have signed this petition, including two Nobel Peace laureates have signed this petition, asking the, South asking the French authorities to not succumb to the lies of the Israeli lobby uh, that we are predisposed to violence and that we are engaged in anti-Semitism. Friends and comrades, <coughs> many a time we are told you cannot compare Israel to apartheid. In some ways I agree with that. I have been to Israel more than 10 times and every single, every single veteran of our country's liberation struggle who had been to Israel had come back and said, you cannot compare Israel to South Africa. Apartheid in Israel is infinitely worse. We think about the anti-apartheid struggle as the last few years of that struggle. We think of the anti-apartheid struggle as the rise of Nelson Mandela, this great reconciler of people. And after Mandela was released from prison, hundreds of universities across the world rushed to make this man an honorary, to award this man an honorary doctorate. But during the years of apartheid, those universities, their administrations, their rectors, their presidents, they were all on the wrong side of history as they are on the wrong side of history today. I'm opposed to Zionism because it privileges one ethnic group over another ethnic group. I've lived through apartheid. We have never experienced the crime of collective punishment. Our homes, our plantations, our olive groves were never destroyed because there was one suspect living in the house. Our legal system never permitted torture. We have never experienced dirt road for black and only allowed to drive on those roads and cemented roads for settlers, for white people and only white people allowed to live on that road. I can go into the detail about what fits and what doesn't fit, where, how, uh, what, uh, in what respect the comparisons can be made and in what respect the comparisons cannot be made. There is one major difference. White South Africa, in its wildest dream, never imagined a country cleansed of black people. They wanted the blacks as servants, as slaves, as domestic workers, as mine workers, as people to look after their children, but they wanted blacks. I do want to conclude by saying that the only option that there is for those of us who say we are committed to a non-violent a response to this is the question of boycott, divestment and sanctions. As was shown in the recent elections again, <laughs> the vast majority of the Israelis want the disappearance of the Palestinian people. And <clears throat> this is the major difference between apartheid 
uh, South Africa and apartheid Israel. And so the continuous wars and the killings of, say, uh, two, three thousand people killed in Gaza, the building of the settlements, uh, the raising of uh, homes inside Jerusalem, all of these are little symptoms of a larger ongoing project that is the problem. But we need to understand that uh, our actions, um, while it is focused on Israel, um, it is part of a larger struggle to create a more humane world. BDS has become the most effective means of opposing the occupation and opposing Zionism. C'est un scandale, monsieur C'est un scandale